Hip rotation is a function that I find that many people struggle with. They don't know how to create pure hip rotation independent of using their knees, foot and ankle, pelvis, low back, so on and so forth. And it's extremely imperative for rotational sports such as your hockey, your lacrosse, your golf, baseball, uh, whatever requires uh, that rotation, um, salsa dancing, anything that requires using the hips. Um, if you don't know how to separate and use the hip properly, you're going to compensate in other joints and that can lead to some problems. Decreased performance, increased risk of injury. Here's an evergreen progression I like to teach patients of how to move purely through the hip so they can utilize it in their sport or athletic endeavor or whatever else it may be. Now I say evergreen because this is not easy. It's, it takes a lot of thought to first get and then as you build it up, it becomes ever difficult. The benefit of this is not only to open up your hip range of motion, but by doing this, you're also teaching your brain how to control the range of motion. So you're strengthening and stabilizing through full range of motion. That way you learn and you can actually use it where it matters in sport and life. First, we're gonna go into a sideline position. I'm gonna bring my knees up to about belt level. My elbow is gonna go straight forward ahead, bend the elbow and knees 90 degrees. If you need, put a pillow or something underneath your head to support your neck. Next, you'll take your top leg and you'll just straighten it out. If it bothers your knee at all, you can put a bolster under there or really you can keep your knee stacked. I like to keep it straight here, okay? Once I'm in this position here, what I wanna do is lift my ribs off the ground. So what I'll do is I'll lift here and what happens is actually your shoulder pulls down to create this space. So you want a gap or a space under Underneath your ribs between the ribs and the floor so you can do this here from here to then here now that we have this position maintained we want to bring the rib cage down to pelvis or pelvis up to rib cage either way getting yourself into a decent neutral spine then from here we should be able to create a nice belly breath once I've got that going, now what I want to do is envision what the movement is, okay? So we're going to move our whole body. What I like, the cue I like to use is that your shoulder and your downside hip are like door hinges and your trunk is the door. We want to shut the door and then open the door. But at the same time, we want to keep the knee and the elbow glued to the ground. So this motion is not being driven by, by me using my top arm and leg, the open chain. I'm using the downside or called the closed chain. I am opening and closing. Good. And for our purposes here, we're really working on the hips. We want to focus on that more than just the shoulder. So maintain that space underneath the rib cage, and we're closing the pelvis forward. We should feel a stretch on the outside of our hip. If you feel a groin pinch, you might want to play around with moving the leg, maybe down a little bit or maybe up a little bit. We don't want an excessive groin pinch. So I'm going to roll my pelvis forward, and then I'm going to open it up this way. I can challenge this a little bit more by doing like I call a fire hydrant, leg up here, and we're just gonna roll forward and roll back. Roll forward and roll back. You can also do this with the knee stacked. What's gonna happen is the top knee rolls forward and then it comes back relative to the downside knee. It goes forward past the downside knee and then back behind the downside knee. Good. Now that we've got that down, we're gonna bring it up just a little bit. We're gonna come up into an oblique sit position. My arm is like this, kind of like a side plank. This leg can go on the ankle or it can just come down like this. I'm gonna put it, I'll put it down here like this. Okay, from here, we don't wanna be in this sloppy position. So first, bring that shoulder away from your ear. Good. Make sure you're not dipped in the um, rib cage here. So we wanna straighten that out. Tuck the chin, ribs down, belt buckle up toward the nose. Nice, good position here. Not here, here. Now that we have that, it's the same motion. Knee glued down, arm glued down, hinge at the shoulder and the hip. I'm gonna close the door and then open the door. Close the door and then open the door, keeping that knee down. So what I'll feel when I close is the outside of my hip or the downside, outside of my glute, this, the, down toward the, the glute that's touching the ground, I'll feel a stretch there. And then as I open up, I'm gonna feel a stretch into my adductors, my groin. Good. If you feel more comfortable, you can put your leg here. I kinda like it this way. Or you can bring it up like the fire hydrant deal. 
as you do this, make sure you're not dipping into the shoulder sloppy like this, right? Keep that packed, roll forward, roll back. What I like about this one is you can add a little extra bit to it. As you roll forward, you wanna think about transferring your weight from your hip to your knee. So as you roll your body weight forward, you'll feel more pressure go into your knee. Push that knee down, and I'm gonna lift my hip off the ground. So sort of like a side plank. I'm gonna hold here, breathe, and then slowly start to come back. I'll repeat. I'll open the door, and then I'll close the door all the way, transfer weight to my knee, and then slowly lift up, hold, and then come back down. So I'm really getting that opening and closing of the hip. Step three is the hardest. We actually turn it to like a plank. So um, what we'll do is we're gonna start with the hip off the ground. Again, shoulder position away from the ear. Lift the waist here so nice and straight, rib cage down, belt buckle toward the nose. We're gonna fire hydrant this off the bat. And what we're gonna do is the same exact thing. With this, it's really easy to use the top side. We're not just doing this. We're moving, we're hinging at the hinges on the downside. So sometimes putting a foam roller between your elbow and your uh, knee helps. Keep that in line with your shirt placard or your chest or belly button, uh, just as a way to make sure that you're moving through the downside like this right and not doing this stuff here okay so we're going to do exactly that maintain this breathe and we're going to hinge as far as we can with the downside hip and the arm i'm going to feel a big stretch in my hip and then i'm going to control it open 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 like kind of like a super clamshell open 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 <sighs> breathing and you can see i'm already getting a little shake here it takes literally like two or three of these until that hip is just going and you get fatigued Oh man, all right. So why do we use this? Because that motion of the pelvis over the hip, we're teaching ourselves how to create that rotation in the closed chain. We use this as babies in development to teach our hip how to function. Uh, and it's also, and when a golf swing, right? A golf swing is not like this. It's moving your pelvis over your legs. It's not, it's not doing this, it's doing this so we're essentially taking we're learning how to do it on the ground as a way to uh, feel what it feels like to purely rotate to the hip then you can build that up into a higher position such as this foot knee hip in a line and i can start to play with closing the door and opening the door this way so that it can relate to a sport or a function on two feet, like the golf swing. Open, close, where I'm moving in my hip and not doing one of these deals where I'm going here and here, where I'm getting relative movement, my foot, ankle, and knee. I'm purely moving through the hip when I keep my ankle, knee, and hip in a line. And watch my belt buckle, I'm opening the door and closing the door. Good, so to work on hip rotation, start with this progression, build it up, increase your capacity to do so, and you'll increase your stability, open up range of motion, and then best of all, it's not gonna be a quick thing where, oh great, I got a lot of range of motion, and then it goes away in 10 seconds because I haven't learned how to control it. It's an active exercise, so you're learning how to control it. Then we wanna associate it with our sport or our function, and that way it's actually usable and not just like a strengthening exercise that's supposed to work. It's actually being applied to something purposefully. Give this a whirl. I love this progression. It's phenomenal, it's wonderful, and it is evergreen difficult. I mean, it's, you can always make it harder, you can also make it easier. Put this on top of your toolbox because you should use it a lot.